feel actually that as a sangha we come into a very beautiful place because the kind of explorations we are having the type of contemplations we are having very very direct very profound we come into a very direct seeing direct discovery of the self and truly exploring topics which are not so much heard about we are not just scratching the surface anymore but coming to the unity of this scene we will look even things like and the one says the i remains and everything comes and goes how is this i the truth of what i am the absolute this awareness is also called the self you see on this part self unless it was i the self means i this awareness which is aware of itself is i we also looked at the difference between the worldly sense of nothing versus this no thing that we are discovering ourselves to be which has the full potentiality of all things and yet its infiniteness is not touched even when the potential is expressed in actual form now we are exploring more and looking at whether as a result of this potential expressing itself as phenomena there is actually any duality that emerges or is it only the singularity it's a very very beautiful exploration and it's hard pictures So let's offer up these contemplations at the feet of the master. It is for him to provide provide the words to express these things which are which have been called inexpressible actually in the past. So let's see if some pointers can emerge, which can throw some light even on these. conceptless findings of contemplation and for some of you who are new to satsang some of this must be sounding completely abstract or intellectual or mental don't worry about it soon as you come more and more into the seeing of what you are then these words will also sound very basic and straightforward 
because the point here is not to exercise our knowledge or our intellect, but to see what pointers can actually be useful aids to our looking, to our discovery of who we are. offer you a question to start with, to start today's inquiry. What is here now in the seeming phenomenal realm, which is the most like awareness? What is here now in this phenomenal realm? It seems like it is the most like awareness. And what do we mean by most like awareness? The attributeless has no flavor, has no attributes, has no color, has no feeling. So can we find something in this realm which resembles that? And it is very, very primal to us. Just simply look. That which is so much like awareness that even to say the presence of It like doesn't have that transparent, it seems. You will find you can type it out in the chats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I want to emphasize on this that we call the attention, which is very much related with what Vedika was saying. So this attention, we can truly explore what is this attention? Does it have a taste? Does it have a color? Can we find the boundaries, although it does seem to be bound. So this attention is almost as if awareness playing in a phenomenal way through our attention. Now why do we say attention and not awareness itself because if it is so much similar then why do we say attention and not awareness itself it's very subtle so I'm going to make a few points and hopefully it will it will come together somewhere <laughs> it looks like an object it's directed towards it's directed towards yeah. objects. Awareness is independent. Yes. 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 So it seems to be specifically directed. And the fact that attention seems to be specifically directed also implies then that it is limited. You see? Because if it needs to be specifically directed or it is specific in what it is conveying 
or bringing the content that is being brought. That means that it is not by default everywhere at once. So as a post which is unchanging in this way and is all there is at the background of all of this, this play of awareness in the phenomenal realm playing his attention seems more like it is limited. So we've been doing experiments over the years where we said that we cannot bring our attention to a thought and be with that completely and be with an external scene through sight. One of them starts to blur as our focus changes. That, that itself shows us that attention plays in this way. Whereas awareness remains untouched through all of this. So, what is dependent on this attention? I know it's sounding a bit like a class, but it's important a bit because there are some questions about this. What is dependent on this attention is our phenomenal perceiving. So, because there is no phenomenal perceiving which is possible without our attention. So, therefore, we can say that dependent or not, phenomenal perceiving is present or absent. But we cannot say that about awareness. This is a very important but subtle point, which is that depending on the presence or absence of attention, there is phenomenal perceiving or not. But we can never say that there is awareness or not. Because even to say phenomenal perceiving was not, there is an awareness of it. So, so that is why we say that it is the phenomenal perceiving which belongs to beingness and attention reporting back to beingness in some way, although it seems as intimate to awareness actually. At one point I used to call them the twins <laughs> because it is phenomenally impossible to distinguish the point of birth of being and attention. As the other day were saying that some are also using it synonymously. So, but it's very good to look at it this way to see that that which we call the phenomenon perceiving is dependent on this primal force called attention. You see? Therefore, that phenomenal seeing is different from awareness. The phenomenal perceiving is different from awareness in the very nature of its limitedness and dependence on this force called attention versus awareness being unlimited by any constraint of any sort. So, seeming distinguishing. Now let's see whether we can pull it back together to show that ultimately this is one. So, this is, we're just having some fun. I know it's sounding very easy. One point, that it seems synonymous with the being, but then how in the exploration of the self inquiry uh, we bring our attention on the source of myself. That's what I'm saying, that uh, you you were saying the other day that many are saying that to being conscious of or bringing attention to something is the same thing. So that I like to distinguish between the two so that it's clear. There we are. So, so now we've rolled it out in a sense, and I don't know how many actually with me. I hope some of you are. So to see that the phenomenal perceiving seems dependent on this force called attention, and yet the awareness, which is the backdrop of all of this, is independent of this attention, is important to see. Now, what is the point of this discussion is not to inject duality into Advaita. It's not that. But to see that for awareness to experience itself in its dynamic way, you see, it's almost like this if this hand was awareness and the hand wants to experience the hand, then a finger must arise from the hand to be able for the finger to experience the rest of itself in a dynamic way. So what happens is that 
within this awareness itself the phenomenal primordial phenomena called beingness takes birth and yet it is only made up of this awareness in sleep state there only awareness is so if only awareness is even this being must be made up of only that and yet to experience itself in a dynamic way this being is created and this being then can be said to be the witness of all that is phenomenally playing out and this awareness is aware even of this this phenomenal witnessing is only subject to our attention whereas this awareness is not subject to even attention so when we say that we bring our attention back home or to the source we are actually bringing it to the point where the distinction between the manifest and the unmanifest starts to dissolve to the point where the yin and the yang they meet where there only the intersection of awareness and being is there and it is seen to be one why it is important to make these points is that otherwise there can be a lot of confusion between awareness and that which we which is the phenomenal perceiving like sight hearing taste there is awareness even of this and this is also made up of awareness ultimately but phenomenal perceiving is subject to see there is awareness is not in fact there can only be phenomenal perceiving if there is attention the other day after such a moment where we were wondering whether sleep state must come when we run out of this limited quantity of attention that we seem to have so that's also another beautiful contemplation we can have sounds sounds as if uh, at the uh, what the yeah. last context some and focus you, some there yeah. you yes. attention yes. maybe when you say aware of aware Yes. 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 The same thing happened when we focus on the object. The attention is missing. The level of attention also many things can go wrong. Yeah. But at the level of awareness, there is no concept of anything going wrong because there are so many attention disorders. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like we can say that we are very good. The the inputs, yes. Several things can go wrong. Yes. Like Guru Ji says that. i have always had a low attention span someone says that i have a longer attention span is it so attention that's why although it is so similar to awareness its colorless attributeless you cannot really make a shape or size of it yet it is almost like awareness playing in the phenomenal realm almost like bringing its head out and you know, <laughs> looking at this <laughs> phenomenal world through the eyes of attention is it so so because it is so intimate because it itself many use attention to describe awareness see and then it becomes confusing for them because they say why you stress on awareness so much is it awareness is also being what they actually describing is the play of the attention and because it is so intimate to awareness in so there is there is no awareness outside of attention but there is because and there's a question you know also from shamik kaur that maybe radha is typing i'm not sure to see that there is something called sleep but there is no phenomenal perceiving no force of attention belief none of these primary forces in operation 
needs awareness. You see. So that which is not coming and going, irrespective of the states, yet to be able to say that yes, this state is something which comes up needs awareness. You see. It is not just a, sleep is not a mental construct. It's not an, so without there being attention. Awareness and means. It's important to check on these things because otherwise the intimacy of attention can easily be confused to the awareness itself. But when you see that attention for has little attention span. Or I cannot give my attention to 10 things, and some will say, I can multitask. See, that means that attention can have various sorts of play in its limited nature. We cannot say that about awareness. So to see this, this functioning of this phenomenal perceiving through our attention, and yet there being the awareness of the entire play of perception, and this awareness of meaning untouched by the content of the play. It's a very, very beautiful point to come to. And I, and I know that this is not really, and I hate to use a word like advanced seeker, but I feel if we just to use words, we can say that this is for those who are really been in satsang and been contemplating these things so deeply. 